Hey, good morning. Hope you're having an awesome day and staying warm in this frigid weather. So this week's Torah portion is the portion of B'Shalach, when the Jewish people leave Egypt, the exodus begins, and then they come to a crossroad where Pharaoh starts chasing them and they have water on one side and Pharaoh and all his chariots and all his soldiers on the other side. And God tells the Jewish people to go into the water. And that's what happens. What happens? As we read every single morning in our prayers, we sing the song that the Jewish people sang when God split the waters for them. And the song tells us like this, that what happened was, the Jewish people came into the water, which became dry land. That's what happened. But then after the people got out, they sang a song to God. And in the song to God, they sing, They went into the dry land, into the water. And the question the rabbis ask is, if you notice, and every word is nuanced, that in the beginning it says, they went into the water which became dry land. But when the Jewish people sang the song, they sang the song that they went into the water on dry land. Why the opposite? Why in the beginning does it say they went into the water on dry land? And later it says they went out to the dry land in the water. One of the greatest Hasidic masters was Rebbe Lemelech of Lizensk. He was one of the founders of Hasidism in Poland, a student of the Magid of Mizrich, a remarkable man, humble, who traveled in exile, not wanting to attract attention and study Torah together with his brother, Abzusha. And some of the greatest Hasidic masters are disciples of these two great luminaries, Rebbe Lemelech and Abzusha. You see, Rabbi Malach says something so profound here. We read the splitting of the sea every single day in our prayers. We repeat the song the Jewish sang. But Rabbi Malach says that the splitting of the sea wasn't just there to get the Jewish people through the water and to safety from Pharaoh and his chariots and his soldiers. The splitting of the sea was there to create a paradigm shift for the Jewish people. And the Jewish people should recognize that nature and all its laws is also an arm of God. Just like a miracle is godly, so too nature and everything that happens every day is a part of God's world and God's miracles. When you think about the sun coming, rising every day, the moon waning and waxing, the stars, the galaxies. How much goes in to make these miracles, to make this nature happen? Says Rebbe Lemelech, when the Jews went into the water, they went into the water and it became dry land. But when the Jews sang the song to God later, they say they went into the dry land in the water. What they were saying is something very profound that we recognized this paradigm shift. That when you walk on dry land, it's the same miracle as water. You see, when we, if you would walk by the ocean, and the ocean would split for you, and suddenly you're able to go in on dry land, you recognize the miracle. But yet, every day when you walk on dry land, every day when the sun rises, every day when you wake up and you're able to breathe, you sometimes forget the miracle. Says Rabbi Limelech, this was the paradigm shift that God wanted to teach the Jewish people. As the Baal Shem famously once said, he says, nature is the biggest miracle. The only difference is that it happens every single day. And that's why when the Jews sang the song, and we sing it every day, and the Shabbos when we stand up in shul, and we face the Torah, and we listen to the Torah reader, chant this song. We recognize the power of the words the Jewish people said. That after God did this miracle for them, they walked on dry land in the water as if they were having walking on water. They recognized 
the miracle in nature, in creation. You know, in 1797, I think, the Alta Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe, was arrested and accused of trying to rebel against, against the Tsar and help the Turks because he was sending money to the Holy Land of Israel. And they took him in a boat for interrogation on the Navo River. And the Alter Rebbe really wanted to bless the new moon. It was after the seventh day of the month, and the Jewish tradition is that we bless the new moon. But you can't do it while you're traveling. And the Alter Rebbe asked the captain to stop the boat. And the captain didn't want it. He says, why should I? And the Alter Rebbe says, well, if you don't, I could stop it myself. And the guy laughed at him, the captain, and the Alter Rebbe made a miracle, and the boat stopped. The Alter Rebbe started preparing the prayer, but he didn't say the actual blessing. The boat went again, and he asked him again, could you please stop the boat? And this time, he said, what am I going to get for it? And he said, I'll write you a blessing. And the Alter Rebbe wrote him a blessing, which later on, years later, the rabbi of Yekaterinoslav in the 1900s actually saw this. They had framed it in glass. He stopped the boat, and the Alter Rebbe prayed. The Friedrich Rebbe, one of his talks, says, why did the Alter Rebbe not say the blessings when he stopped the boat? Why did he wait for the captain to actually stop the boat? And the answer he gives is something very profound. He says, because the Alter Rebbe wanted and recognized that the greatest power of mitzvahs is finding the miracle in nature, doing the blessing in the mitzvah in nature. The Alter Rebbe didn't want the boat to stop by a miracle, and then he should be able to do the blessings. He wanted nature, which was the greatest miracle, to define and to stop on its own, and then he would make the blessing. Think about our lives. Think about the fact that we get up every single day. Think about the fact that we have our health. Think about the vaccine. Think about all the things that happen on a daily basis. And take the message of the song that the Jewish people sang in the splitting of the sea, recognizing that they went into dry land on water, that even when you're on dry land, even when nature is just humming along, every single moment is a miracle of Hashem. And when you recognize that, it changes your perspective in life. It gives you appreciation for the little things, for the health we have, for the gratitude we should give for that. God bless you, and may you always see the miracles in your life on a daily basis.